Okay, there it is, all finished, put back together. <sighs> it was a lot more challenging than it should have been. Quick note, do not tie to the board. The board fan power is 24 volts, but it's a super low amperage, obviously. Um, and that was my one of my problems. Secondarily, uh, it meant cutting into wires. That was dumb. Don't do that. I do not recommend you take on this challenge unless you're willing to lose your uh, warranty on your unit. Now, luckily, that 24 vo uh, volt out to the fans is separated from all the other powers because I did test my printer to make sure that it still heated up, still had uh, all the other fans work, still had 24 volts, uh, and also the hot end worked, uh, the leveling worked, all the stepper motors worked. So everything worked except for the onboard fans uh, did lose power. That's not a big deal because I wanted to use the offboard fan anyway and I was going to unplug those but the best way to do it is the second way I did it your meanwhile power supply or whatever brand power supplies they use in here has three 24 volt outs one that goes to the main board and one and two that are not tied down to anything so I just tie down to one of those I put a diode in so that there is a no possibility of getting a short back from anything that's tied to that 12 volts power once it's out. Uh, plus the board won't be able to short it. Should have done that from the first place. That was my bad. Uh, and then secondarily, I should have metered everything. All right, so let's turn this sucker on. And as you can see, it's booting up. It always says no printer uh, attached for a minute. Uh, as soon as that clears and it reads all of your heads and everything, so it goes through a Buddha process and it will complete. And as you can see, there's my fan installed, running. And it's, it's blowing pretty good. So definitely got good airflow there I can actually even feel on this vent airflow coming out because the fan is big enough that it's allowing air to push up and uh, push out so I can also feel the air here so that means that are creating airflow directly on the board because pretty much under that fan is the board on the other side so my board should never overheat it should give plenty of airflow and we'll see if it affects the bed heat because obviously the airflow could pos possibly make uh, this too cold and then blow up into here but the whole thing about it is, is the pad is in between here and there and the pad uh, basically heats this side. So it, I doubt it uh, that it's going to affect it, but if it does, I'll put a potentiometer on that fan and I'll make it blow slower and see if that affects it. Okay, so I'm testing my printer. I'm seeing if it's gonna function correctly, as you can see. I've got the bed heat is at 60 degrees and a lot of people were mentioning to me that that fan that I put down here could affect the bed heat possibly because it's going to create such a cool environment underneath the bed. But so far, I mean, it's staying within one degree. I don't think that's going to matter very much. Uh, it goes right back to 60 and my hot end is heating up right now. 
I'm gonna try to see if this is gonna do it because if it does, then that's awesome. I've, uh, it's a lot quieter. I don't know if you can hear that, but I have the power supply fan and that fan, and of course the, the head, uh, the uh, hot end fan, which are all that's left now. Uh, of course, there's the side fans too, and it will get loud during the print, but at least the uh, ones that were cooling the motherboard and expelling heat from the interior of the body, those things were super loud. They were going bad all the time uh, or hitting things. This is totally external uh, fan, so I think that it will do better. I was a little worried because I wasn't sure if the cooling was going to come on, but it did kick on. So now I have all my fans on. And that's the extent of the power or the uh, volume. Go here. This is the stock. New volume. I don't have a decibel meter. So I can't tell you what it is in decibels, but I would say it is slightly quieter. It's going to be definitely cooler. I like it. And I definitely like uh, that it's off the ground a little bit because I never did like that design where it was so low. Um, that to me, I understand you don't want sh to uh, add any shake, but it's got rubber feet on it and that should keep it you know, the airflow was gonna be much better because you got all this space to, uh, you know, inject the airflow from and then expel it. And there's so much more room for heat dissipation versus that design, which is super low. And, uh, you know, the fans are not efficient, small and loud. All right, so I have to take this box here that has my power supply that's going to convert it from 24 to 12 volts because these fans are PC fans. And PC fans like 12 volts, not 24 volts. And of course, these boxes are just... Sons of bitches to open. Alright, so this sucker's pretty good size. Looks pretty stout. Looks kind of well built. It's heavy. So I'm going to have to figure out how to place that in here. I think there's some open areas in the back there. I'm probably going to end up doing some double stick tape or something. Um, actually, does it have double stick tape in here? Looks like new. And there's absolutely nothing in the box. So that's useless. Anyway, got to figure out how to incorporate that. It does have some screw holes, so I might just shoot it through the screw to mount it in there. Once I have it open, I'll determine that. Now I have an old fan wire. But I cut off an old fan. So I'm hoping that this is the same size as the ones on the board. And I'm just going to wire it on the output a positive and negative and uh, then I'm going to take the input from the other board and make that uh, positive and negative alrighty then so here's the deal guys I'm going to show you what I did originally because you need to learn from my mistakes. I assumed that the motherboard fan power would, number one, have some kind of a diode in it to protect from any kind of backfeed. And number two, have the amperage in order to run more than just those teeny tiny fans that they come with. I was wrong on both points, and so I couldn't. 
Now, in premise, what I did should have worked if it wasn't for the fact that these Chinese boards are extremely uh, low powered and underpowered and designed. I mean, they, they do what they need to do, but obviously, and I know that the newer boards actually have multiple power outputs now. They do 12, 24, uh, be, for just this reason, because, you know, 12 volt fans are plentiful, 24 volt fans, not so much. And I definitely wanted to use a 12 volt fan, a PC fan. They're quieter, they're larger, they're more efficient. Uh, and so I want, definitely wanted to put one on the bottom of this unit. Now I got the legs off of Thingiverse. I'll leave a link for that. Uh, they are well designed. Uh, although I probably would put some kind of uh, a key right. on these so legs in order to keep installed. them from spinning. We're going to uh, do a boot up test right now so that I can figure out if I wired everything correctly. Can you see sparks or smoke? I didn't, and there's gonna be some badness. Now, the one thing I didn't do that I probably should have done and I recommend doing is I should have plugged in the uh, power supply to make sure that the in and out were correctly marked. If I didn't, don't do that, there could be a lot of sparks and it would be very bad. I mean, input and output is very important. So I probably should have done that, and now I'm debating. All right, so I thought about it, and uh, the fan does not produce an output, and neither does the board. So even if I had it wired backwards with 20 or with 24 volts going into the output, it only blow up the it should only blow up the board. So I'm taking a chance here, but so far so good. I do not hear anything. But the fan's not moving, so that's bad. All right, so here's how I am going to do it now. I was gonna tie into the board uh, under the uh, fan power but there's some limitations on that and I do not recommend that. So that's a bad idea. Uh, the better way to do it is to tie to your power supply. You have three spots for your 24 volts. And once you do that, you can use something like this board to take the 24 volts and knock it down to 12 volts. So now I have 12 volts coming out of that board and I'm just gonna mount that board inside of here in that open spot. And hopefully that's gonna take care of my problem. Now, <laughs> it was kind of scary because when I wired it to the other one, uh, always meter the output of your fan output because negative and positive sometimes can be reversed. And even though it's a red cable, it could be negative voltage and DC. That's a bad thing. So I'm going to uh, tie in this fan and see if uh, my power supply can handle it. All right, so here I am. I'm basically tying in that board I got off of Amazon and I am going to stick it in there and turn on the fan it powered up so I knew it was going to work so I proceeded to close up everything and zip tie everything because now I had it wired right I should have done this from the get-go the Chinese boards inside of 3d printers are let's say crap when it comes to uh, certain things they get the job done and you know, they're, they're pretty cheap boards, I mean, $50, $60, but you would think that they would have some kind of short protection, some kind of voltage protection in order to keep it from blowing out your output 
uh, just by hooking up a foreign device. Uh, I hooked up a 12 volt device and it blew out my 12 volt output uh, or 24 volt output on my board. So anyway guys, that's my video. I just wanted to show how easy this project is. And when I say easy, that's all relative. Obviously, I made some mistakes. I tied to the fan output. Bad idea. Don't do that. Tie to your power supply because power supplies are cheaper usually than motherboards. That's number one point. Number two point, always meter your output. Make sure you're getting your voltage that you think you're getting. And then tie it to a board that is not going to backfeed into your uh, motherboard because your motherboard does not have any kind of short protection or voltage protection on it unfortunately so tie to the power supply put a diode put a fuse make sure that your power is coming out correctly with a meter then tie it to the board then meter the output of that board if you've got 12 volts you're already doing good then you take it you tie it to the fan you mount it uh, on the bottom up plate of your printer and you should be good to go. That's basically what I did and I got it to go. Now luckily the fan output on the motherboards is not the same as the uh, fan output to your hot end or your cooling fans. And your heated bed is also a different output. So blowing up the, uh, basically the motherboard fan output is not the end of the world. You can get by that. I got by that. They, I was going to rip those fans out anyway and run my own power. I was just thinking that, hey, I'll put it on the motherboard output uh, just in case uh, it had some kind of a thermistor on the motherboard that would tell it to speed up or slow down. But instead, I just tied it right to the 24 volt power and knocked it down to 12. It's working great. And I would say that's the way you should wire it. Always throw fuses and diodes and any kind of protection you can in between your device and your power supply. Anyway, that's my video. Thanks for watching. I'm going to get the tech out of here. Later.